Game one of the NBA Finals went in favor of the Suns. Can the Bucks answer back and capture the lead? How about UFC 264? What is Conor McGregor going to do against Dustin Poirier? Find out in the next edition of Sideline Sports Podcast. Welcome to Sideline Sports Podcast. If you're not on the sideline, it's not Sideline Sports Podcast. This summertime, it's loaded with action. There's always something going on in any type of sport. NBA is still going on. Who knew it was going to be going up this far? And we're in July with the Suns taking game one. But I'm Alex Naveka from Sideline Sports Podcast. If you're not on the sideline, it's not Sideline Sports Podcast. Of course, of your SoCal Sports News. And in the bottom screen, that is Mark Vargas, NCAA football, NFL, combat sport, and NBA insider. Mark, how you doing, man? I know you've been busy with center lock, and I know you're still hanging on over here with Sideline Sports Podcast. What's going on, man? Yeah, man, just staying busy, getting ready for that beautiful time of the year, football season. But we got the NBA Finals going on. We got a great UFC card, and of course, man, not just you, Alex, but we got the one and only Dory Ahun in the house. That's right, baby. Hey, Thanks hey, for having hey. me on, boys. Whoa, whoa, whoa. You you forgot a big part of the title. Uh, you can't sleep on the Lebanese Tiger. You How did you miss that, Mark? Come on now. Dory. I was, I was, I was throwing you a lob, you know, just getting ready <laughs> for the whole finals talk. You know, I was seeing a lot of lobs yesterday. So, you know, I was just throwing one up to you, man. Yeah, I think that was kind of like a like a windmill type of dunk uh. right to finish up. <laughs> but let's hand off the mic to Dory. Hey, Dory, how you doing? It's a, always a pleasure to have you on the podcast, man. Man, thanks for having me. I had, I had so much fun on last time. I had to come on here and double up and have a good time with the boys. You already know where your spot is at as far as NBA basketball, even – UFC, there's always something going on with the UFC. But before we can even talk about those topics, this episode of Sideline Sports Podcast was brought to you by Manscaped. Make sure to go on manscaped.com, order yourself a product like this, or even a product like this. You got the Weed Whacker, good ear and hair, ear and nose hair trimmer. We've even got the Lawnmower 3.0. Man, it's precise shaving. How often do you see an LED light on it? it the shave is accurate. It's precise. And it's pain, pain free. It is an amazing product. Make sure to go on manscaped.com and join the 2 million men that are on manscaped.com. And the, it's great stuff, guys. Use our promo code sideline20 to save yourself 20% off plus free shipping. Mark will probably take care of the shipping. I'll go ahead and take care of the 20% off. Just go on manscaped.com, order yourself something from their 20% off. We appreciate all the support. And of course, Manscaped matters the most and first impressions matter the most. So let's take it straight to the action, boys. NBA Finals, Suns and the Bucks. I, I don't think anybody really predicted this being the final. I think a lot of people were discounting the Bucks, And the only reason is because the last couple of years, they have been choke artists, if you ask me, as far as going to the NBA playoffs, losing very early on. They always get a very high seed in the first or second. But here they are now. They're, they're sticking to their word. And they have, finally, they have finally showed their worth right here. But game one going in favor of the Suns. We'll go ahead and hand it off. Over to Dory first. Dory, what were your thoughts on game one? And the Suns, they just did their thing, and they were able to take care of the business and jump with that one and nothing lead in the series. Yeah, man. I mean, you had big play from Aiton Booker and Chris Paul. Aiton just dominating the inside. Like, I love the way he use, uses his body to, like, seal people out. And then you just see, like, lobs, 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 and he's just catching and putting it back up, like, in a place where he can be dominant. He's not far from the basket. He's just – finding his spots 
Booker, man, he's just – he's getting his shots wherever he wants. He's being aggressive. Chris Paul, what what is – this is insane. I'm – like, that last game, uh, game uh, – what was it, game, game six, game seven of the last series, he went off for 41. Last night went off for 32. He's looking like the Chris Paul of old in, in year 16. This is crazy. What do you think, Vargas? I think it's – it's pretty like you said, game six, 41 points, zero turnovers. That's that's CP3 on, um, you know, the New Orleans Hornets. That's, you know, CP3 go battling with Kobe type stuff right there. Right. You know, I remember watching that back in the day. Like, man, we could get our, our hands on this dude, and we almost did. So, yeah. you know, I think it's it's a mixture of of just, you know, being in the in the right spot at the right time. You know, we're not here to discredit the Suns. They, you know, a couple injuries have happened on their way to, to the finals. But even look at Chris Paul. Chris Paul was hurt in the Lakers series. He was hurt at the end of the uh, the Nuggets series. We got, I believe, he got COVID, and uh, you know, leading into the Clippers series. So, you know, they've had their uh, fair share of injuries on the way as well. Right. Um, and on the Buck side, you know, Chris Middleton, man, that's that's who's been. I know. Uh, They've been calling uh, him and Giannis uh, Batman and Superman and, or Batman and Robin, and they've been calling Giannis Robin. But uh, <laughs> that's what that's what it's wow. going to take. You know, it's it's going to take yeah. it's going to take the Bucks. You know, I don't think Giannis is going to be a hundred percent in this series. I it was a big surprise to me that he even played yesterday. But you know, he looked pretty good. We got we got to see how that knee goes. If it swells up, if it's you know. If it's the, uh, I mean, they'll be in Phoenix for one more game, but when they fly back to Milwaukee, that's a long flight, and the elevation on the knee and all that. We'll see how that goes, but you know, it's gonna. I, I think it's gonna go deep. I think it's gonna be a six or seven game series. Just, just by you can, you know, watching the game yesterday, the Suns jumped out to a, a pretty big lead, and you know, I think they cut it down to what six or seven, and you know, that's. The, the Bucks can hang. They're just going to need a little, little bit more production from their bench. And if Giannis can, you know, gradually, I'm thinking by game three, game four, if he can get as close to 100%, you know, he's going to be effective. Because Aiden, Aiden's going to have to play Brooke Lopez, you know, every, anytime Brooke's in the game, you know, and, and Brooke was getting his. So it's going to be uh, interesting, especially if, uh, was it Sarch from the Phoenix Suns? He might be out too. So if you got to be thrown in you know, your third option at center, you know, you should be looking to exploit that all day. Right. If just looking at how game one played out, quarters one through three were won by the Phoenix Suns. If you look at it, the Suns in the, in the first 30, the second 27, and the third ended up being 35 points. The only quarter that the Bucks won was the fourth, and it wasn't by a whole lot. They only won by three. You can't play like that if you're the Milwaukee Bucks. And I'm going to call it right now. If Giannis is not 100% in this series, the Bucks have no chance of beating the Suns. And I'm going to call that right now because if he's not healthy, you're going to put some heavy miles on Middleton. And you're not getting a whole lot of production from P.J. Tucker as well. It's, it's not going to happen. It's not going to happen because the Suns have that three-headed monster – uh, they have their big man, Aiden. They've got Booker, who, hey, at any given moment, he could flip the switch and go Kobe mode at any given moment. And we're starting to see a very, very young Chris Paul coming back. He's back to his old form, scoring 32 points in that first game. If Giannis is not 100%, no chance for the Bucks. For all we know, if he, if he stays the way that he is, might even be a sweep. And I'll, it's a wild take, but... It, if Giannis isn't there. Who do you think is more important? you think Devin Booker or do you think uh, Drew Holiday? Who do you think, if you had to pick, like, an X factor between those two, like, who do you guys say, well, if Devin Booker has a good series or, if, you know, Drew Holiday has a, a good series, who do you guys think that benefits more? I would say uh, I would say definitely Deep Book, man, because I can't see Drew Holiday – going off or having like the the amount of impact that Booker can have. He has it in a different way because he's like more of a two-way player. His defense is amazing as in Drew Holiday. 
but Booker, when he's on, he can he can really change the change the tempo of a game, man. So, to me, I would say Booker's definitely more important, as in like making it, as in making an impact for sure. But uh, man, this is gonna be a good one. If if the Bucks are gonna contend right now, I think they need Drew Holiday to step up. Drew Holiday and maybe get some more more from PJ. But uh, they need they need all the help they can have. They're they they're gonna need a collective effort. The 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 Suns have their big three that they can kind of count on, but I feel like the Bucks need more of a collective effort for sure. I the easy answer yes, it's Devin Booker because this is the guy that he is the second captain on the team. If you ask me, this is the guy that has been a day one son, and he has done amazing things for this franchise. But I'm going to go with Drew Holiday because it's a cry for help at this point for Milwaukee. They need as much help as possible. Even though Giannis scored 20 in game one, they need anybody, anybody just step up. Just try to score as many points as possible. At the end of the day, that's what the name of the game is. Score as many points as possible. They don't have a lot of bench production. Only 22 points coming off of the bench. Both teams coming off of 22 points with the bench, so a lot of projection from the starters. But to be Holiday only scoring 10 points, unacceptable. You can't. Unacceptable. You got to be somewhere close to 20 if you want to hang with the Phoenix Suns because they've got a lot of guys that can contribute as well. I'm just going to say, you can't sleep on Cameron Payne as well. That guy can just come off of the bench and just start rocking the game and just take control of it as well that bench for the suns is more solid than the bench for milwaukee and like i said if some of these starters don't step up for Giannis, because like mark said that knee injury it's it's not it's serious it's i'm surprised that he even played as well and just because he came and and he played he did 20 points but is that real Giannis numbers though is that what he scores no, it's not. The guy scores high 20s to very easily 30 points. And that's what you knew. He is not 100%. He is not himself. So this Bucks team need to find other guys. Who's going to be that guy? Who's going to be that guy that's going to step up? Because if you look at their counterpart, Cameron Payne was the guy that stepped up for the Suns while Chris Paul was out. For he it seemed like he was out for such a long time during during the Clippers series, the Nuggets series, and even with the Lakers, he was in and out, and he just wasn't himself. And that's why Devin Booker was the guy that stepped up at that moment, and that's why they were able to surpass the Lakers. And if you ask me, the Lakers has been the team that really got the Suns in gear and got them. Hey, we just beat one of the best teams in the NBA, like. It could be smooth sailing from here, but the way I see it from the from the Bucks, if nobody steps up, it's going to be a very easy NBA Finals for the Suns. Absolutely, anytime you beat LeBron, man, it's uh, it's uh, I mean, you you beat LeBron, you've beaten I don't even you beat Tom Brady basically, you know, it's that same type of oh we got something special and for Chris Paul, first time in the finals. Uh, you know how sweet would it be for him to get a ring? You know, beating his uh, beating his boy LeBron. You know, on the way to the finals, and then taking out the Greek Freak, one of the best talents the leagues have the league has seen. You know, in the last basically decade, so um, it's exciting. You know, I'm I'm expecting this series to go six or seven. Like I said, um, I think I think it will come down. I think you know this this has the capable uh, you know capability to being one of those series that the home game takes every game. So, you know, I, I expect that even if the Suns take game two, going back to Milwaukee for game three and game four, um, you know, say, saying everybody's healthy, I think we might be looking at a 2-2 series headed back to Phoenix for a, a game five, or I think it's game five still in uh, Milwaukee, and then the six and seven are at Phoenix. So either way, it's going to be it's going to be a, a barn burner and, you know, but as fans, what more can you ask for? You know, we don't we don't got the Lakers in Brooklyn, so this better be a good series, you know. So it's going to be a very interesting NBA Finals. Don't sleep on it just because Game One didn't go the way 
for the Bucks as they're also looking for their NBA championship as well. Can't sleep on it. Giannis also, he's despite his knee not being 100%, he's going out there and still looking for that first chip. But we're going to step aside. When we come back, we're going to talk about UFC 264 coming at you. And, of course, we're going to talk about what's coming up next for Dory, the Lebanese Tiger, and what's in his arsenal because he's got some good stuff coming up, coming your way, guys. Make sure to stay tuned because if you're not on the sideline, it's not Sideline Sports Podcast, the source of your SoCal Sports News. We'll be right back, everybody. What's up, guys? This is Amesh Dominguez. NPC uh, Mass Physique competitor, you're watching Sideline Sports Podcast. And we welcome you all back inside of the action. Once again, I am Alex Naveka from Sideline Sports Podcast. For if you're not on the sideline, it's not Sideline Sports Podcast, the source of your SoCal Sports News. Once again, in the bottom screen, that is Mark Vargas, NCAA football, NFL, combat sports, and NBA insider. And on the left side of me, that is Dory Aoun, the Lebanese Tiger. He is here to he was here to break down the first half of the show, NBA playoffs, the finals, who's going to take it in that one. And now it's time for his bread and butter. It's time to talk about UFC 264. And headlining the fight all the way from the top, Dustin Poirier versus Conor McGregor. But I know there's other fights that are worth mentioning before we can even talk about that main event. And I know before we jumped in onto this one, Dory, you and Mark were talking about some fights that are worth watching. Which ones would you recommend other than the main event that you would recommend for everyone to watch? And what are you, look, what are you thinking about? Man, uh, the fight I really want to see is uh, the Sugar Sean O'Malley. That guy's just a performer. He's always coming out, looking for the kill, knocking people out, one-hitter quitters, walking off the walking off the mat like a savage. I always love watching him fight. I'm also excited for the Greg Hardy uh, tied to Avasa fight. It's just a heavyweight battle. Greg Hardy, former former NFL uh, NFL player, making his transition into uh, into the UFC, and he's slowly been with his like already insane athleticism. He's building the skills to the skills necessary to to dominate in the UFC. So he's getting a lot better. It's been fun seeing his progress. So this is this is a good tie to Avas is a good opponent. Um, he's the one that chugs a chugs a beer and a shoe after the fight if he wins <laughs> the savage. So that's gonna be an awesome one. Stephen Thompson going against Gilbert Burns. Gilbert Burns coming off the loss for the belt. Stephen Thompson making a run late in his career, but he's I've been I've been following him. He's saying he's still fresh and he's still coming for the top. So this would be a good uh, jump up for Stephen Thompson. And then McGregor Poirier, the, the the trilogy to cap off the night, man. I'm, I'm super excited. Yeah, man. Uh, I know uh, we were talking about it a little bit before, um, you know, for Sean O'Malley, man, this is a, a coming out party, you know. You have the, the – everybody is watching this fight. Everybody wants to see the top of the card. But, you know, for for people who like McGregor, O'Malley is not too far away. You know, he has that that show business side to him where he's he's gonna be a draw if he continues to win. You know, he had that early in, the early loss, but it was you know mostly due to an injury. Um, you know, he he's he's somebody to keep an eye on not just for this card, but if you're a fan of the UFC or if you're trying to get into the UFC, you know, I would definitely keep up my eyes on him. And then you know, who doesn't love a, a big heavyweight? you know, slugfest, because that, that's what it's going to be. It's going to be two big old dudes throwing haymakers and trying to knock each other out. So, that's you know, right. that's going to and, – and, and most likely that fight will end in a knockout. Don't – you know, I, I don't see it going the, the full, uh, you know, the full three rounds. But, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll keep an eye on, uh, you know, I'm, I'm too – you know, we'll, we'll drop our uh, predictions in a bit, but – you know, yeah. I kind of have my uh, my take on that one. And then for the uh, Burns and uh, Wonderboy fight, that's going to be a hell of a fight. Both of those guys know that. If they win, they pretty much get a shot for the title, you know. And uh, I, I, I don't know about that one either, you know. It's going to be a great fight of McGregor. We got the trilogy with Dustin Poirier. And, you know, both of them knocked each other out 
in their previous fights. So, you know, now it's getting a little nasty now. I know uh, Connor posted that that video the other day of his soundbite of, you know, telling Dustin he's coming for him. And then yesterday he posted that message of uh, Poirier's wife trying to DM him. So, uh, you know, uh, the last fight was a little bit more. Connor was coming back from a little hiatus and he was kind of trying to be the nice guy. But I think we're getting, you know, crazy psycho uh, Connor McGregor back. And for our fans of the UFC game, uh, I can't wait. I can't wait for the fight. I can't wait for the freaking weigh in because I know I, I get what the weigh ins, what, tomorrow, right? Thursday or is it yeah. Friday? Yeah, the, the weigh ins are on Friday, but you have the press conference on Thursday, and then you could watch all the embedded stuff, which is pretty fun to watch too. So all that's coming out this week. And anytime McGregor's fighting, you know, it's always, it's always just a show, man. He, he puts on a show. Sean O'Malley, like you said, he's, he's, he, he he has a crowd, man. He, he's fun to watch, and people really are are latching on to him as well. So this card's gonna be sick, man. I'm I'm super excited for it. Definitely gonna be some fights to look out for here in this UFC 264 fight card. There's gonna be some good ones to definitely take a look out on. But now it's prediction time, boys. Who do you guys got? I know you guys are talking a lot about the top three fights in this fight card. What are you guys thinking for those three? Go for a BP. All right, man. We're gonna start with the the heavyweight fight. I'm gonna go with I'm gonna go Greg Hardy on this, just because I think uh, the story does sit up uh, well. Um, I think he comes out with the we'll go with the stoppage in the third, and then um, for the uh, Burns and uh, Wonder Boy fight, that's a tough one. But I'm gonna go Wonder Boy. I also think you know I think his uh, he's been there, done that, along with Burns, but. I think it's it's time for him to get a, another title fight. And, uh, you know, leading into the uh, main event, of course, man, I want to see a, a, a knockout. I want to see a finish. So I'm going to go. I'm going to go. I, I, I hate because I feel like I whatever I say, I feel like, man, if I say this, they're most likely going to lose. But I'm going to go with Conor McGregor. I'm going to, hey, I think he's back. And I think post, post-match, he calls out Khabib. And it's going to be, you know, I, I look, he's, he can go fight for the belt, and I think he can go easily do that. But I think Connor knows he's, he's fighting more than for a belt. He's fighting for money. And you know what? We all, we all want to see the, him call out that, that beast in, the, in, the, in Russia, you know, out there just waiting to come back. But, you know, that's a little – getting a little carried away but dory what do you got for this you think card he'll come back you think uh khabib will come back if, if mcgregor wins hey if, if connor says some way outs you know some way out remarks it's at least get at least will stir the pot you know khabib, khabib will come get a check real quick huh <laughs> hey that hey if connor fights him in russia or wherever Ooh. he's from I don't think Connor makes it out alive, but <laughs> that's insane. That would hey, crazy. but your time, bro, that would be you can put that fight in any any stadium in the world and it will sell out. I'll watch it. I'll be there. Don't worry. I'd watch it. <laughs> <laughs> that's a so fact. Gary from the jump the jump the fence the the cage again. Yeah. That's what that's what I want to see. I want to see him get nasty. All right, let's see here. We got tied to Avasa Greg Hardy. I don't know, man. This guy chugs beer out of a shoe, bro. Like, he's just built different. I'm going to have to go with Ty on the heavyweight battle. Like you said, I could see these guys just going for that knockout, man. The heavyweight, you know, every punch has power. So, you you, got, you always got to be careful. But I'm going to go with Ty Tuavasa. I think he's fought a, a little more um, – he's fought a little, little higher-ranked opponents. So, I think he's a little more prepared for this bout. Uh, going into Steven Thompson and Gilbert Burns. Man, I'm kind of, I might be with you, BP. Uh, Steven, Steven Thompson's sideways style, the way he uses his front leg, can really keep the distance. It might be hard for Gilbert Burns to get in on, uh, on his power shots that he likes to throw. But um, Gilbert Burns, Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu world champion, if he gets it to the ground, man, it could be trouble for Steven Thompson. So I'm kind of I'm in a weird spot here. Gilbert Burns, he kind of had his... Um, you know his will broken. He was knocked out in in the in the in the last in the last uh, in the championship bout. 
But you know what, man? Stephen Thompson's on, on the way up. Gilbert Burns just lost, but I think this would be a good way for Gilbert Burns to get back on track. I'm gonna I'm gonna stick to my jujitsu roots. So I'm gonna go Gilbert Burns on this one. Now moving into the to the main event, right? You got Dustin Poirier coming out strong in the last one and knocking McGregor out in the second round. But McGregor came out hot in that first round, man. And and they always say if you could survive the first round with McGregor, you you have a good chance. But McGregor looked really good in that first round until Poirier started attacking the legs and hit him with that lower calf kick and just shut down his whole leg by hitting that 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 that, that nerve or that once it once you get hit there a couple times your legs shut down and you have no movement you have no power on your shots so but I think McGregor can go ahead and make adjustments and 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 find out ways to check that and avoid that lower calf kick and if he does do, make those adjustments, I think McGregor will win. I think his uh, striking's uh, far superior. But Poirier's a dog, so you can never count him out. But I'm going McGregor on uh, in the in the final. And then if he calls out Khabib, we can go with that too. So those are my picks, man. I'm excited for this fight card, and I think I think there's a lot of good matchups here, and it's it's gonna be a fun night. Oh, absolutely, it's gonna be a, it's gonna be a fun night as always. It's gonna be. I think the cards start like at noon. I think the pre 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 prelims come out at twelve. So I mean, if you guys want to see the future of you know UFC, make sure you guys tune in. You know, early on, and those are all free fights. And some of those cards, some of those fights, you know, are really you know see some crazy stuff happening. Some some crazy knockouts, some crazy submissions, yeah. and some freak injuries most of the time too. So you know, it's a it's always it's a fun day for you know UFC fight fight day fight night. Definitely gonna have a lot of fights to look forward to, and you know what? Uh, I now I'm crossing my fingers that if McGregor wins, I'm hoping that he calls out Khabib, Khabib because that last time that they fought. Uh, Khabib took him down, and it, it got very, very interesting afterwards with Khabib hopping, hopping the cage and jumping on there and starting some fights, and even even people jumping onto the cage as well and trying to take on McGregor. So we'll see. We'll see. It's going to be you can, really have, you can literally have that fight at the new Raider Stadium in Vegas. You know, that would be – you can have that fight, sell that whole brand-new stadium out, and – Oh, if, uh, if McGregor loses, he always has that that trilogy with Nate Diaz too, and you know those fights are freaking amazing every single time. Yeah. So, it, yeah. I mean, any fight McGregor's on is insane. He's easy. That's why he's the money draw. That's why he's the number one paid mixed martial artist and almost combat artist as well. So, man, it's gonna be sick. Can't wait to see what's what's going on next as well. And we talk about combat artists, and we have Dory Aoun, who himself doing some Brazilian jiu-jitsu, and he actually just went to the Boise Open, and he made that trip. And Dory, how did that go? I mean, I know it went really well. It went, it went well, man. It went well. I competed in uh, four different divisions. So you compete in the gi, like the kimono you wear, and then you compete in no gi. And then um, for, for each of those, you compete in your weight class and then the, the champions of each weight class go at it in the absolute weight class. So there's four different divisions. Um, I won my division in the gi and the no gi. My weight class is under, uh, it's, it's medium heavy, under 195 pounds. And then um, in the absolute for the gi, I lost in the semifinals by a, by a penalty. It's just like little, it's, it's hard at that level. It's so nitty gritty. Like it's, it's a lot of strategy. It's not like, it's not like you're just gonna go in and smash. You, it's it's a lot of stalling. It's a lot of playing the game. It's a lot of oh, I'm up on points here. I gotta be smart and not engage in certain ways. So I'm 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 working on the strategy of jujitsu. It's not always about being the, like the most aggressive, being the most dominant. Like if you watch the match, you'd be like, oh dang, he's putting it on that guy. But you, I end up losing. You know, so you gotta you gotta be smart. You gotta play the game a little bit. There's a lot of technique and a lot of strategy at the highest level of of competition. And then I went into the nogi absolute, and I, I won that. So I had uh, 12 matches. I, I believe I finished. I had eight submissions. I got some staples in my head. Oh, <laughs> in the nogi absolute, head butted somebody on a on a takedown. It was a it was a it was a crazy trip though, man. I got to hang out with Corey Corey Grange out there. 
Mark Vargas. Boise is a cool spot, man. It's a lot of fun out there. But um, I, I, um, thankfully, I came out um, with not many, um, not any injuries, just uh, slightly banged up. So I took, uh, I took a few days off, and now my body's healed up. I'm getting ready for the Phoenix Open at the end of this month. So same idea. Instead of getting three golds, I want to try to get four this time. I want to try to win every single division. So that's the goal. I'm just training hard for it right now, just staying humble, trying to get better. Um, I know there's a lot of work to be done. Jiu-Jitsu is a crazy sport, man. You've had guys training since they were three, four years old, and I'm, I'm four years in the game. So I'm catching up and competing at the, with, the, with these guys that have been doing it forever. So there's a lot of work to be done still. Hey, Dory, when you compete, is yeah. it like so like how is it like you weigh in like the i guess the day before the tournament starts or the morning of or so there's no there's no real real cutting weight in jiu-jitsu bro you you weigh in and you step on the mat 10 minutes after so so everyone's pretty much at their at their original weight so which is pretty cool you know so there's no like huge advantage or disadvantages there but um i i still cut weight i cut like four or five pounds and then i go way in and then in that 10 minutes i like drink drink some coconut water and and, and hydrate a little bit but you also don't want to get too bloated either and yeah. so you kind of have to be smart with it but um i'm used to it now so i compete like after sitting in the sauna for like 30 minutes all the time so <laughs> you get used to it but it's pretty cool because there's no huge weight cuts. It's it's pretty safe, and um, everyone's pretty much at their like strong weight. They're not compromised at all. You like no gi or? Uh... I, I love the gi. I love the gi, man. That's why I was surprised. Like when I lost, I was like, man, I I always do better in the gi than no gi because I didn't wrestle. But uh -huh. my my jujitsu now, I like I focused a lot on doing no gi, so I it's it's like it's there they go neck and neck i love doing both there's a lot of guys in jiu-jitsu that only do one so when you do both that's like all right dang like his game's legit because it translates to both you know some guys they they only focus on one and they can't do the other but you know i i like i enjoy doing it all so the gi's a lot slower it's a lot of grips it's like very technical and you could hold people down you could hold different position no gi's more like wrestling very like a lot of scrambles, a lot of like fluid motion. You can't really hold people down. So it's just like off instincts. It's a little faster. Honestly, in my opinion, no gi is a lot more, more fun. Um, but gi is just like a different mental challenge. Like it's really chess. Like if you put your arm somewhere, you're getting caught. Like you have to be really smart and really careful in gi. And no gi, you, you kind of have a little more leeway, I would say. So going into this, uh, the Phoenix Open, what adjustments are you going to make this this time around so that way you make sure to go all four with gold? That's right. So adjustments I made for the Boise Open, I was a little I was a little banged up. I had a I had a, like a knee and a foot injury that I was dealing with. Um, so this time I just honestly I'm just resting a little more. I'm not I'm not beating my body down as much as I did training for the Boise Open. So I'll get one good competition training done in the morning, and then at night I'll kind of just do some recovery stuff. So I think just taking care of my body more so that way I'm not beat up getting to the tournament. And then so I could really show everything out because you have a lot of matches. So if you're if you're sore going into it, you're done. You got to be smart. You got to take care of your body, taper down the training week of the tournament. So that way you could you could show out. So I would say, honestly, like in a month's time, it's hard to make like super like super strong adjustments. But for now, I'm just going to take care of my body and, and, and keep working the strategy and, and study my tape and see the little mistakes I made and just build off of that. Hey, Dory, I just want to take this time. Hey, man, give a shout out to your boys at Hustle, man. They came out. They, they, they supported big time on the last video. And, you know, give them a quick shout out. Let everybody know where they can find them. Um, we know right. where you guys are located at and all that, you know, all that good stuff that yeah, you'd be able to give them. Yeah, man. Hustle, hustle Brazilian Jiu Jitsu changed my life, man. Like it gave me, gave me a purpose. All the guys there, are, we're a family. We are all supportive of each other. And without them, man, I don't know. I don't know if I'd be training. Like seriously, like they, they got me in and they have my back. Hustle, Hustle Contorno, my professor has always been there for me. They're just a lot of good people and a we're just a, we're just like a, we're a family, you know? So it's, it's cool to be a part of something where everyone's so supportive and everyone, everyone is, is, uh, 
it's not just about you, you know, you're getting better so that your teammate gets better as well. So it's, it's, it's a family and I'm just super proud to be a part of that team. We're, uh, we're located on 17th and Grand in Santa Ana. We're a check mat school, hustle Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. We're coming up. We got a lot of guys competing now and we're, we're a growing school that's, that's looking to make an impact in the, in the Jiu Jitsu world. Hey Dory, next time we come back on air, you know, when you join us, I want to see more medals on the wall, okay? So make all sure right. I want right. to see, you know, I want to see some more, all right? That's just one of the walls, man. Oh, oh, oh man. there we go. We get to That's see just one of them. Man. We got we got them everywhere around here. There we go. I want to see that wall filled up, baby. Okay, we're filling them all up by next time. I want four more. I got you. So there you have it, guys. Dory Aoun going to go to Phoenix for the Phoenix Open, and we'll definitely keep an eye out on that wall. We would definitely want to see four more in the back, maybe on your right, over your right shoulder there. It looks like there's not, there's no medals there, but maybe we'll see oh, some the next time man, we have Dory spot. on there. So <laughs> he's, got a, he's got some spots there for some more medals. But that's all the time we have left here on Sideline Sports Podcast. We thank you all so much. For tuning into this one if you guys like this episode please give it a thumbs up also hit the subscribe button down below we're just nine away from 300 it's insane on how close that we're getting i remember we were barely getting to 200 and now here we are just near the finish line of 300 also comment down below who your takes are for first of all the nba finals and your your choices as far as for UFC 264. We want to hear all about it as well. Thank you so much for tuning into this one. Once again, on the bottom screen, that was Mark Vargas, NCAA football, NFL, combat sports, and NBA insider. Mark, as usual, always appreciate everything you do for the podcast and always good to have you, man. Hey, man, I appreciate everything. And make sure you guys tune in to the Center Lock Show on Sideline Sports. And, uh, yeah, man, make sure uh, everything goes good this weekend. Stay safe. And, yeah. And on my left-hand side, that is Dory Aoun, the Lebanese Tiger. Be on the lookout for him, folks. I will put all of his social media handles down in the description below so you guys can stay up to date with everything Dory has got going on because he's up and coming, folks. You definitely be on the lookout for him. Dory, thank you so much for coming on to the show, man. It's uh, the fans – they're really liking you, man. They liked your first appearance, so uh, we had right. to bring you back. All right. Much love, man. Thanks for having me. Always a good time catching up with the boys, man. Pleasure to have you on, guys. And once again, this episode was brought to you by Manscaped. Make sure to go on manscaped.com. Use our promo code SIDELINE20 so you guys can save 20% off plus free shipping so you can get great quality products like this. As soon as you hold it, you just know that it's good quality stuff. It's nothing cheap you you pay for what you get great stuff and also the lawnmower 3.0 can't go wrong with that such accurate such precise shaves going there and of course first impressions matter the most but i'm alex nameka from sideline sports podcast signing off from this one thank you so much for tuning into this one and of course enjoy the nba finals and enjoy ufc 264 have a good one everybody